Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 Deviations. In the last video, we talked about the applications of differential calculus into the field of chemistry. On those lines, we are now going to be talking about another natural science, which is biology. So we're going to be talking about the differential calculus of biology. And this is going to seem a little bit similar to our video on chemistry. We're going to do a couple examples. We won't be diving into the um, level of a calculus or biology course, but we'll just be trying to seek our applications from different places because on your exams you might be seeing biology or chemistry examples in the form of word problems. So we're going to try to cover some of those examples today. And as always, I recommend re-watching any calculus videos that cover differentiation, if you aren't familiar with that, because we'll be using that a lot in these examples. All right, so let's get started. Again, we're going to be using the James Stewart's Early Transcendentals Calculus book, or the Calculus section 3.7. We're going to be doing examples 6 and 7. So we're going to start with 6. So our example says, let n be a function of time, so n equals f of t, be the number of individuals in an animal or plant at a population at a time t. The change in population size between two times is delta n, so the average is delta n over delta t equals f of t2 minus f of t1 over t2 minus t1. And of course, this is that general secant line approximation for average rate of change that we've been seeing throughout high school and probably in a little bit of middle school. And of course, we've covered this previously. If we just get rid of these deltas and change those to differentials, we'll just get dn over dt. And that will be our derivative, our instantaneous rate of change. Now they're telling us to consider f of t equals 2 to the t times n naught. Find the rate if n naught equals 100 after 4 hours. Okay, so this is a similar growth equation that we've seen in video 17 when we were covering exponential growth and decay, although of course here we're seeing a general base exponential as opposed to a natural exponential. And we can differentiate this function using some of our um, differentiation rules for general exponential functions, and that will give us dn dt equals n naught 2 to the t times the natural log of 2. Okay, that's our derivative, and now they're telling us to plug in 100 for n naught, and after 4 hours, so t equals 4. So that means that we are going to get dn dt evaluated at t equals 4, and that will be 100 times 2 to the 4th natural log of 2, and that's 1600 natural log of 2. And of course, we're going to be using a calculator here, and we'll just approximate that to 1109. And that is our final answer. Okay, let's do another example. This is going to be example 7 out of James Stewart's calculus, early transcendentals. And we're going to be dealing with laminar flow. Uh, so this could be like blood flowing through a vessel here. So consider the law of laminar flow, V equals P over 4 eta L times R squared minus little r squared. And the rate of change is dV dr, and that is equal to negative PR over 2 eta L. Okay, so now we're going to consider a situation. For one of the smaller arteries, we can take eta equals 0.027, r equals 0.008, i equals 2, and p equals 4,000. So now we can solve this, and we can take v equals 4,000 over 4 times 0.027 times 2 times 0.00. 0, 0, 0064 minus little r squared. That's approximately 1.85 times 10 to the fourth in scientific notation times 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth minus r squared, little r squared. Should make sure I'm being clear about the big r's and little r's. And if we simplify that, that will give us 
v of 0 0.002 equals 1.11 centimeters per second. And if we evaluate dvdr at r equals 0 0.002, that will give us negative 4,000 times 0 0.002 over 2 times 0 0.027 times 2, and that's approximately negative 74 centimeters per second per centimeter. Okay, so that was our little brief discussion of differential calculus in biology. Uh, of course, this won't be the last time we'll be seeing biology applications in our single variable calculus course. That will come back later. In the next video, we are going to be covering the physics applications and that should make for a little bit of a longer video just because the entire uh, concept of classical physics is built around Isaac Newton's urge to find instantaneous rate of change so we will be seeing a large um, depth of calculus covered in physics and not only right now with differential calculus, but later on in calculus too, we will be covering a lot more of that physics topic. All right, we will see you then. Have a great day. Bye-bye.